Welcome, folks! Welcome to CSR and welcome to another round of the A Link Between Worlds Any Percent Tournament. We're in round three and it's Ben Stevens 56, the amazing Mr. Ben versus Miax. And we have awesome commentary today by Mr. Romulus himself. And before we hear him, let's mute the music and let's switch over to the loud. Hey, Romulus! What's up? Yo, what's up? We're pretty much ready to go. Just waiting for Miax to ready up, and then we can start. And I hope you're doing good, Romo. Um, uh, let me join the channel as well, so I can see the SRL time. Sure. And I can't get Miax stream to work. You can't. Well. Oh. Yeah. What's what's the matter? It just remains paused, and I when I try to unpause, it doesn't work. Give it a quick reload, the page. Yeah, I tried it. It oh, okay, it's working now. All right. All right, here we go. Enjoy, everyone. All right, so. The start of the game is not like that different, at least for the first two minutes. They're just gonna mesh a few text boxes here and follow Gully around. Alright, for this run, uh, you are actually forced to save here. I don't know if any of the runners are gonna make any saved saves later, but you can't really skip this weather vein here, so... It can't be helped. All good now with the streams from her? Yeah. Great. <laughs> Alright, so now that they got the sword... Instead of going straight to the castle to try to deliver it for the captain, they are going to Kakariko because they want to activate a weather vein here. Because after the first dungeon, you actually gain the ability to warp around. Unlike A Link to the Past, where you have to wait until you get to the Dark World. In this game, it happens pretty early, which is really helpful. And now they are going to Death Mountain. And you usually need to have a strength upgrade to lift one of the rocks blocking the entrance, but you can actually use the crawl to uh, do a small damage boost. Oh, and Ben fortunately failed it. So you can actually reach the loading zone. Okay, he got it. And Miyaki got it first try as well, as it seems. Okay, so for this part, uh, they want to get at least 10 rupees from one of those pots or either killing the Moldorms. Um, 
seems that none of them are getting lucky. They have one rupee, but it's fine because... Okay, Ben got two blue rupees. That's great. They can get rupees after they leave. It's just slightly slower. Because they have to rely on RNG from the boulders falling. And the reason they get here early... Not only they're gonna get the web vein for later when they finish two dungeons, but it also it's gonna make that's the quest explanation. The, that's gonna make the game get slightly confused. And once they death warp back to Wings Halls, uh, Ravio is gonna be there, and he's not supposed to be there yet, so. Uh, things are gonna get a little bit crazy later, but for now, what that does is, uh, they since the shop is already open, they can actually start renting items, and if you play the game normally, um, you are actually forced to rent the bow first, but since it's not really uh, what's intended, the radio shop is actually at a diff different... Um, how can I say that? It's not the same as the start of the game. It's actually like it's a point later in the playthrough. So they can actually rent off the items. It, the first one is actually free. So they... Let's see. Me is going for the tornado rod. It's two different rods you can go for here. Ben got the fire rod, which is the most expensive item. So he got... Uh, Fire Rod and Mia got the Tornado Rod, which costs 50 rupees. So it's gonna be a little different for the uh, next item rentals and the Rupee Route. Now they just had to go to the castle as Ben already did it, and then go to the Sanctuary to deliver the sword. Let's see if it's gonna be first try then pay. Alright, now they have to collect at least 50 rupees because they need to rent another item after the Sanctuary segment. Uh, for Ben, it's gonna be the Tornado Rod, which Miek already has. But Miek is going for the Hammer, I believe, since he got the Tornado Rod first. And after they got the Wimp, it, it actually unlocks the first... Um, item button you can actually get two of them after the first dungeon you can collect Gully's adventurous pouch I don't know if any of the runners are going for it I believe Ben is not going to get it but I don't know about Mix. It, it's not really worth it because after you get the master sword you can actually get the quick equip which is a way to equip items without having to pause the game, so getting another item slot is kind of useless. Alright, so after you finish the Sanctuary, that's actually when the, the game is supposed to load the Ravio shop the first time, so now we have two Ravios. Thank you. 
By doing all of this, that stuff, like going to Death Mountain, it actually skips a huge uh, part of the start of the run, or at least from the casual gameplay, where you would have to talk to Zelda, then go to Kakariko and all of that stuff. So Ben's getting the Tornado Rod, because it's, a, it's actually really useful for Eastern Palace, because it allows you to skip the boss key. And also by doing Death Mountain early, it's gonna skip a cutscene at the start, right at the entrance of the Eastern Palace, where you meet one of the sages. Oops, spoilers. Hey, you can't just do that. You can't just spoil me. I have not finished this game. <laughs> you don't even get to see the, the sage, so it doesn't matter. Actually, actually, you get to see him, but during the boss fight. Yeah, so Ben's going straight to the dungeon and Miek's gonna have to get a few rupees. That's why he got the hammer. So, remember, what's the last big discovery in the Link's Return Worlds? Like, speedrunning wise? I think it was Ice Rod Quipping. Do we see that in a run? Yeah. A bunch of times, both runners are going for it. So Ben getting, is getting more rupees here, because he's gonna need to buy a lot of stuff. For the Fire Rod route, you actually rely a lot of RNG from Rupee Drops, but it's fine. You would, would actually need one Rupee from RNG, but Ben got a point of them, so he's fine for this part at least. The Fire Rod route is, I believe it's around 7 seconds faster. So here is going to set that uh, Armos Knight up for the boss key skip. It's gonna get him really close to the corner, close to the door, and it's gonna abuse the invisibility frames that Link has. And as soon as the Armos is really close, while he has the invisibility frames, he's gonna use the tornado rod. And what that does is gonna he's gonna get pushed onto the ceiling, so he can just walk to the loading zone. I think he got it first try. No, it was second try. Yeah, it's it's pretty decent. So let's see how Mix, Mix goes here. I think it was truly. Okay, got it. So the Yuga fight is pretty much the same every time, just have to shoot arrows to stun him and use the sword afterwards. As for hard containers, um, I think the runners are going to skip just the Hera one for the Hyrule part. Getting this hard container here is not faster, but it's safer because um, during when you're going walking around on the overworld, it's just gonna have a bunch of enemies on your way, and you have to do a trick that's gonna. Uh, make you take damage, so it's safer to just have four hearts here. Getting a bunch of rupees as well.
Uh, right now, Ben's in the lead, I believe it's maybe around, um, I don't know, maybe 50 seconds, one minute. Yeah, it's around one minute. So now they're going back to Ravio's shop and... For the Fire Rod route, you can actually rent the hammer. It usually costs 50 rupees, but Ravio gives you a discount, so he's gonna get it for just 20 rupees. That's why the Fire Rod route works. So he's gonna get the hammer and the bombs. As for Miek, he already has the hammer, so I believe he's just gonna get the bombs. And he's gonna rent Fire Rod, Ice Rod and Hookshot all together later. So after beating Eastern Palace, you actually meet Irene. And she gives you the bell, so you can call her to just warp around to the weather veins activated. So that's why they got the Kakariko one, because they are gonna have to go to the uh, eastmost part of the map, and then they have to come back to Kakariko. He's also gonna get this one because after he goes to Kakariko he has to come back here anyway. So it's just a lot faster. Just warp around instead of walking. So for this quest here, he doesn't even have to get into the cave and watch the cutscene there. can just watch this one and work to Kakariko. So here he has to buy the smooth gen back, which costs 200 rupees. And he's gonna get a silver rupee right afterwards. And he has a pretty decent amount gonna have 114 rupees. He needs 150 at this point just to get all the remaining items, which is the ice rod and hook shop. And also he's gonna get the Pegasus boots, which for this game is actually pretty useful because there is a few tricks you can do with that. Because unlike A Link to the Past, when you try to stop, you do a small uh, slide animation and you can use that to uh, cross over small gaps. If you try to uh, walk up those stairs, uh, there would be a cutscene, so what it's gonna do is place a bomb 
right in front of the pillar and it's gonna use the tornado rod after two red flashes so it actually boosts him to the second floor so he can actually just walk straight to the queen zora Now, as for Mix, um, yeah, it seems he's gonna get the um, the extra item slot. And Ben is going for the Reaver's Rupees as well. Because from this point on, he has to rely on uh, Rupee drops from enemies or pots. But he's fine, he only needs 11 Rupees. So he's going to House of Gables, the second dungeon. Now Mix gonna do the cutscene skip as well. All right, he got. Oh no, he failed. <laughs> Feels bad, man. No, he failed twice. Oh, he gave up. Here Ben's just playing safe, waiting for the platform. There's actually a faster strat for this room, which is actually pretty useful for the Fire Rod route because it allows you to get six extra rupees, but he doesn't need it. And it only saves around seven seconds. By taking damage there, he cancels the Tornado Rod animation and just get past the spikes. Can also get that key without having to merge and just get to that beam. Just by using the Tornado Rod. Alright, so now what it's gonna do is, it's gonna use the Tornado Rod just to make that keys move. It's gonna position it in a way that when he uses the Tornado Rod, it's gonna take damage and it's gonna get boosted to the loading zone, skipping that uh, puzzle completely. And he just goes straight to the boss. Here's a small dash you can do to skip using the Tornado Rod once for these platforms. It's one of the uses of the dash slide. And for this boss, it's basically gonna use bombs and a spin attack to get rid of one of the uh, segments of the boss. One thing he needs to pay attention here is, even though there is no stamina bar on the screen, it's actually there, so he has to manage it. So he's gonna void out, so he can actually refill it completely. Because I I believe he can only place five bombs, I could be mis mistaken, but it's probably five bombs before he runs out of stamina.
Yeah, three bombs, okay. Oh, he got hit once. I can't even tell what's going on on Mick's screen. Alright, he's about to get the key. Oh, he got the monster part, unfortunately. Uh, as for Ben, it's actually faster to get this hard container here because it takes a while for the uh, pendant to spawn. So once you get the hard container, it spawns right afterwards. So it's the only hard container that's actually faster to get the entire run. Uh, Mia failed the tornado rod boost. It's gonna have to reload the room. Oh, okay. Okay, he got it. And then got uh, the ropes he needed, so he's fine. Now Mix is making his way to the boss room. As for this cave, you usually have to leave and re-enter it so you can get to the other side, but you can actually... Um, oh, that's dangerous. has only one heart left. Okay, you got it. We can actually dash across that gap, so right before he falls back down, he just cancels the dash. Oh no, Ben died! Not again, dude! Ben, no! That, uh, that's really bad, because if you die, you lose all the items, and you have to rent them again. That's honestly the worst mechanic that's, that Link to the uh, Link to Two Worlds has. Like, why? Oh, <laughs> uh, it's Mix's chance now. <laughs> also, a nice bit rate and... I, I don't even know the backup for this part. Because it's too early, so he can't really... I don't know. He probably He's probably going for the uh, Lake Hylia Gold Rookie, I believe. That's why he got bombs. Yeah, it seems like it. So Mix is now ahead. It was actually pretty risky, because uh, if you get that dash first try, which Ben did not get, you can actually get to the to the exit before the boulders start like getting in the way. And Ben should have waited because if you fail if you fail it once, you have to wait for the entire cycle. I believe it, you have to wait for five or four boulders to come by. Poor Ben. So this is like a five minute time loss? Or even more? Uh, I don't think it's that much. I think he was maybe only two minutes ahead of Mix. I don't know, maybe four minutes. Yeah, Ben's no longer in the lead. I don't even know how much he needs from this point on. Well, anyway, let's see. Mix is trying to cross the gap now. There's also... I think there's also a gold rupee he could get in Hera.
might he might actually want to rent the ball. And since the rival is in the way, he, you actually have to talk to him and then you hold like an upright angle on the circle pad so you can actually rent it again. It's kind of precise, but not uh, not really. Let's see. Well, Mix is going um, for this third floor of Hera. And for this dungeon, you can actually use uh, some out of bounds tricks to like skip a bunch of floors, which is gonna do right now. He's gonna get this key, which is usually for the um, for the door on this specific floor, but he's not gonna use it there. What's gonna do is it's gonna place a bomb. It's gonna raise the platform. It's gonna wait for the fourth bomb flash. Oh, he got it first try. That's pretty damn good. Um, and he basically gets boosted to the next floor, but he's still out of bounds, so he can just use the tornado rod again. And while out of bounds, he's gonna keep using it just to go up. Now he's waiting because he's gonna have to use the tornado rod two times in a row, otherwise, he would fall back down. So he was just waiting for it to refill. And he's gonna use that small key on this door here. Which you're not supposed to do. So that's a, a really good hero so far. Fell down. Should have just taken damage. Without worrying too much about the enemies. I did not see which items Ben actually got, so I'm, I'm not sure how many rupees he needs. Oh no, he's really low on health again. Alright. Now he just had to wait. Got all. Even hook shot and ice rod. If that's the case, he's fine on rupees. So for the Moldorm fight, you want to use the bow to hit the tail because it deals um, two points of damage. And then there's only one slash left. Depending on where you finish the fight on the arena, it might actually be faster to skip the hard container. If you're the, on the lower part, it's not faster. But if you're like closer to the upper part, you can actually just drop down, use the hammer to get up again, and the pendant will be there. Otherwise, you have to watch the cutscene of it spawning. So let's see, Ben's going for the bomb rod now. And he got it first try as well. That's that's great. Both runners got it first try. Right now, that's probably the hardest trick in the run. Of course, if you're not going for the old trial skip method. Now Mix is making his way to Lost Woods. Get the Master Sword. This puzzle here consists of... Um, for the first part, you have to follow that pole. Uh, it, it it may seem 
tricky because you have to keep following them around. But it's not really because their final positions are going to be the same every time. So if you know where he's going to be, you just have to watch him and see in which direction he goes. So it's not that bad. As for the second part, you, you're not supposed to follow these two guys. But then again, the positions are the same every time. So he's got just needs to pay attention to where they are going before they split up. And he has to go left. Ben's going through the spin attacks because I think he missed the arrow shot. Not sure. Yeah, he's going for spin attacks. And this last part here, you just need to wait until they split up and you just return from the, enter the entrance you just um, came. So it's a pretty easy puzzle. Oh, he doesn't have the bow, yeah. I forgot it. And he skipped the hard container as well. So right now I think they are maybe two minutes and a half apart. Uh, ben split by accident. Um, so I'll go for a quick reboot, um, hoping and it will hide uh, his time on the screen again. Um, for whatever reason, it's not hiding automatically as it should. So let's hope this does it. Yep, all good. So for any percent, you basically rent all the items except for the boomerang and also the sand rod but it's not there anyway And now, basically, um, Mix has to wait just a bit because it's not the same. It's kind of the Hyrule Castle is kind of messed up right now. It's a mixture of both versions: one of the start of the game and one uh, as it should be right now after you get the Master Sword. So. You have both evil and nice guards here, so you just have to wait until Impa returns. Thank you. 
now Link's gonna get the uh, Pendant of Courage again, even though he had it all along. From the Red Soldier, nonetheless. Oh, Ben just got the quick equip. He's not going for the bow yet. So now that they have the quick equip, it's actually useful because it all allows you to cancel the animation of the item you just used. Okay, he's, he's gonna wait for the... Um, until he goes to Warrow. As for this part, it's the same thing as the Eastern Palace boss key skip, except it's a lot easier. Just gonna, just gonna use the Armos and the Tornado Rod to get out of bounds and just uh, reach the other uh, loading zone. So Ben's about to start Hyrule Castle itself. Meanwhile, Mix is really close to the next Yuga fight. If you have the bow here, you can actually uh, slash that iron knuckle like three times and use the bow once to reset. Otherwise, it's gonna try to block the attack. So he tried to use the hook shot instead. So for the Yuga fight this time, he's gonna split up in. Uh, three images of himself, and you can actually tell which one is the real one by looking at his scepter. <laughs> and you can you can tell where he's gonna end up emerging. If they don't like, uh, if two images don't cross across each other, so you cannot actually tell where he's gonna be. I did not even see. You can actually finish the second phase by using a spin attack. I don't think Mix did it. Otherwise, it's gonna be three cycles. I think he just went for the three cycle instead of going for the spin attack strat.
So it's essentially the start of Waru. And it gets really fast paced right now. So both runners are going to do the swamp first. Uh, let's see how good uh, Ben's fight is gonna be. Alright, that's the first phase. He's going. I believe he's going for the two cycle strat. Yeah, so you can use the spin attack to kill him right there. And Mix is gonna get this uh, weather vein because it's faster since he has to come back here later. He's going to do. Both runners are going to do Thieves Hideout West, so having that weather vein is pretty useful. They are also going to get this weather vein because it's really close to a portal to Hyrule. And for a few dungeons, they actually have to go back there and use another portal to get to Oro. And Mix is going to save, apparently. No, he... Wait. I don't know why he got the weather vein without saving, doesn't make much sense to me. Anyway, it's gonna skip the having to use the big bomb to drain all the water just by using a ice rod block to clip out of bounds and just swing to the loading zone. They have two choices here. They can either skip the boss key or skip the boss. Uh, apparently Mix is going for the boss skip which is slightly harder than the boss key skip, but it's around 50 seconds faster, something like that. And he got the first ice clip, ice block clip first try, which is pretty damn good as well. That's usually the trick one. You have to clip twice. You're gonna have to do it right after raising the water levels. Oh, and he had three monster parts already. <laughs> okay, he got it first try. It's going pretty well for him. All that's left is uh, trying not to clip in bounds inside the boss room, which could happen if you're not careful enough. Oh, he fell to the void. Gonna have to clip again. I think he went too high when trying to avoid the stairs. Because if you swing really close to the stairs, you're basically gonna clip in bounds again and you're gonna go up the stairs and it's gonna lose a bunch of time. Now he's struggling with the second ice rod clip. And Ben is catching up. Oh, he got it for no, it was second try. Okay. Well, they are really close now. And Mix finally got the second clip again. And he's making his way to the boss room. Alright, so what they want to do here is... Um, there's a small gap between uh, where they are now and the boss room itself. So they want to swing and get uh, into the boss room in a way that you're not um, you're not completed in bounds again and you can actually just walk oh no he fell he's gonna have to clip again Ben's going for the 
um, for the loading zone and all. You can just walk there. You have to be careful because if you move uh, to the wrong side, you're going to either fall into the void or you're going to creep into the boss room and you would have to fight Argus. So Ben's ahead again. Now they're they're making their way to Desert Palace. Oh, Mix fell again, unfortunately. I think he's going too high up. He's afraid to re uh, end up creeping in bonds again when he's closer to the stairs. So another use for the quick equip canceling is you can also use it for uh, the fire rod and you can use the flame to boost yourself out of bounds here. So he used the ice rod clip there and then the tornado rod to get to where he is now. And with the flame he can just boost himself up there and just walk straight up to where the portrait is. He doesn't even have to fight the boss. With a small dash slide here, he just reaches it. He's getting the heart container too. It's basically there. It doesn't spawn after you kill the boss. So it's actually useful for us. It's really convenient. One thing he's doing is, after you finish talking to the sage, you actually have to wait a moment before you can start moving. But if you press A, um, you can actually move before intended, and you can reach the portal um, a lot faster. Just, I think overall it's gonna save just maybe four seconds if he does that every time. It's just a small optimization. Alright, so next is going for the ice ruins. And normally, to get to the other side, you would have to go through the entire uh, or mine, but using a fire rod boost here can actually get out of bounds there, use the hook shot and just cross to the other side. All right, let's see. Uh, he's equipped with the tornado rod. There's a small time save here. It saves just half a second. Oh no, me equipped into the boss room. He's gonna have to fight Argus. So when you merge and merge in this game, the actors around you actually are going to freeze, which means the platforms are going to stop briefly. But if he uses the tornado rod here, he just gets onto the platform and he doesn't have to merge. Doing that only saves half second. There are a few uses for it. You can use it here and also in the Yugenon fight, which saves one second. But after that, it's basically an auto scroller, and he has to wait and be careful uh, not to fall down if an enemy hits him. Mix using the ice rod to make Argus uh, stand still, otherwise he would try to jump.
really unfortunate, but the run is still alive. Now Ice Ruins is one of the most broken dungeons in the game. You can clip it off bounds here using um, the elevator and the wall. You can actually do that to clip and just dash before the elevator comes all the way up. And you reach the ceiling so you can just walk and fall into the boss arena. And since he fell on the upper part of the arena, the boss fight is not going to start. But the boss actor is still there, so you just need to use the fire rod t twice to kill it. And it's great that he got it because Dark Stair fight is really hard if you're not used to it. It deals a lot of damage. And since Ben has, I think he has only seven hearts or six. I'm not sure. It's actually pretty dangerous. Now Ben is going to do Dark Palace next. So he's going back to Hyrule. Meanwhile, Mix is going to beat the Desert Palace, but not really, just get the portrait. I think he made a safe save. Because if you fail the dash slide and fall into the arena, you lose a lot of time. Because since there are no weather veins uh, around, you would have to warp back to Vacant's house. And now he's getting the ball. So for Dark Maze, you can actually use that enemy. Uh, you want to make him get really close to the tree. You're going to take damage, use the hookshot to stun him, and it's going to make you clip onto the railing. So you can actually just bonk to the tree and get on the railing, and it skips basically most of the Dark Maze. And Mix finally got the um, Irene's portrait. So there is not much to say about Dark Palace because it's pretty straightforward. There are no major skips here. And Mix apparently is going for Dark Palace next as well. You have so many options for uh, dungeon orders for Waro.
Yeah, it's not optional because you're just gonna have to work one extra time. Ideally, you would want to use the portal here after desert, actually. And for dark parts, basically, you want to um, solve a small puzzle that's blocking the uh, boss door. So he went up there just to uh, complete most of it. And Mix is going for the Dark Maze skip. Not sure why they like to use the Tornado Rod, it's, it's just lower, it doesn't do anything. But it's fine because he got it. Oh, and he got caught. Getting caught there is gonna place you like halfway through the maze. <laughs> and for Jimmy Sauer's fight, he's gonna place three bombs before uh, lighting the last torch up. So when he spawns, he's gonna take uh, three bombs. Uh, right on his face, and there's only one bomb left for the mask to break. So it, it just speeds up the fight. And for the second phase, gonna do this roar here. It's gonna put away all the fire in the torches, so he has to light them up again. And it has a little bit of RNG because it's gonna either decide to stand still and maybe attack you or it's gonna keep walking around and it's a pain. Yeah, it, it was a decent fight because at least he did not roar again. Alright, so next for both runners would be Total Rock. Which Ben is going to right now after leaving Dark Powers. The grab the hard contain is just for safety because there are a few tricks which require you to take damage and also the last fight is kinda scary. You get on deals I think it deals depend, depending on the attack it could deal like six hearts of damage. Uh, to reach the Total Rocks area, he would have to go back to Hyrule, but he can just use the Fire Rod to get on this uh, railing here and just walks to the Lake Hylia area. And to actually enter Total Rock, he would have to rescue three turtles, but he can actually do a glitch called Animation Storage. Uh, he gets really close to the uh, to the dock there and kind of stores the animation of him leaving. So 
so you can just get close to the entrance. So coming up, there is uh, the newest method to skip the boss key. It's gonna use that whiz rope to um, damage boost him on the railing up there by using the tornado rod at the right time. And it's really easy compared to the old method, which was a frame perfect trick using a bomb mix about to enter the Jimmy Sword fight so for, for the first phase of Rhinex you basically want to hit him with the ice box Second phase, however, he could uh, do three attacks. He could try to bite, start spinning around, or do an explosion attack. He wants to do the bite attack. Unfortunately, he got the spin attack. Um, he can actually cancel by taking damage, but it's a problem because it deals two hearts of damage and he could just decide to do it over and over, which is happening right now, and it starts to get really scary for Ben because he only has three hearts right now. Oh my god, Ben, no, he has only half a heart. <laughs> okay, he's fine. The fight's going horribly wrong, but... As long as he survives. And yeah, the one thing also, the more you damage him, more bites he's gonna try to do. And right there, he only had one um, health point left. And when he gets to that point, he actually, do, he actually does the triple chomp. which is really rare to happen. But he's fine, he's alive. And meanwhile, Mix is going for Turtle Rock as well. They seem close, but Mix still has to do um, Ice Ruins, which it's gonna do after Turtle Rock, it seems. As for Ben, this is gonna do Skull Woods and finally Thieves Hideout. So he's just gonna get. Uh, the warp to uh, Kakariko and use the portal there. Mix getting rid of the enemies, because if you if you get hit while using animation storage, it kind of cancels the glitch, so he would have to do it again. Oh, apparently he wasn't too close, like he should. Should work now. No, I. I don't even know why it did not work this time. Honestly, it should have. Okay, there you go.
As for Skull Woods, you basically have to uh, leave and re enter the dungeon a bunch of times. Can actually merge there instead of waiting for the platforms to go all the way around. Basically, enemies' movements RNG sums up this entire dungeon. Sometimes they're gonna get in his way and he has to just use the lamp or slash them away. And Mix got the boss key skip first try, so he's going for Grynex now. So, this next room here you would actually have to place two statues at a certain spot so you can like expand the wall and just merge but you can place just one statue and... oh, first one we got hit and use the tornado rod to get onto it but you have to do it really quickly otherwise the wall master is going to come and if you use the tornado rod as he spawns he's gonna grab you and bring you back to the west uh, entrance. VX got a really decent uh, opening, got two bites right away and a spin right afterwards. Uh, okay, it's not that great of a range. Now Ben's gonna do that small dash, so he reaches the chest without having to use the platform. So normally to get the chest here, you would have to bring the other eyeball on the other side of the room. But there's a trick where you can get it back before it gets stuck uh, on the pedestal. So you just use the same eyeball for both pedestals and get the boss key right away. And here he's basically going to use the tornado rod as the boss is attacking and it's gonna creep into the loading zone, completely skipping the fight. People say it was, I think, the first glitch discovered, I'm not sure. Anyway, X is going to Ice Ruins. And it's about to do the fire rod boost to skip the R mine.
Let's see, he's not equipping the tornado rod, so he's just gonna wait for the platforms, like normal. And as for Ben, he's going for the West Dungeon, which is Thieves Sideout. You usually would have to like run the password around the city, but since it's always the same answer, you could just go and open the dungeon right away. Uh, right now, Ben is in the lead. So here's gonna place the statues on the switches to open the door. Uh, and right afterwards, gonna do a clip using both statues. Uh, the reason why he has to open the door is because uh, he has to rescue Thief Girl and has to bring her all the way back to the entrance. The problem is Link can, um, can um, walk through closed doors but Thief Girl can't. So that's the sole reason why he has to open the doors here. Otherwise, she would get stuck. So he's gonna place the statues. Like that. He's gonna hit the switch. He's gonna make the other statue fall on top of him. And it's gonna fall uh, on the ceiling or on top of the walls from the floor below and he just walks up there hits this switch here so it opens the other door so you can bring Thief Girl and now he's gonna make his way to the mini boss room which consists of five red Igors so he's gonna use the spin attack to kill them if he does the fight correctly, which he did, uh, you can actually finish the fight in two cycles because uh, all five of them are going to open their eyes at the same time. If the fight goes wrong, one of them is going to open the eye really late and it's not going to like have enough time to kill all of them. Let's see, Mix got the uh, boss skip. Which is basically the dungeon skip. One small optimization you can do here is you can't dash while Thief Girl is following you. So if you try to dash, it's gonna stop following. So sometimes you have to place her on top of the switches. So you're just basically gonna press L once to make her stop moving instead of having to talk to her. And now Mix is going to Skull Woods. As for this part, there isn't much to say, you just have to bring her over. One thing he did there is... If you don't, um, if you don't touch that red platform on the bottom part, 
Uh, it actually skips a cutscene where a bunch of Zazex spawn. Now here, two Zazex are going to spawn, so he equipped bombs because he's going to attempt to keep a quick kill here. He's going to place two bombs, so while he's trying to kill the one of the Zazex, the other one's going to take damage. If it's done correctly, uh, the Zazek to the left is going to get boosted towards your way, so you can kill him right away. Now it's time for the boss. For this fight he's gonna use the hammer because not only it deals uh, 3 points of damage, it also hits stall blind twice if you are really close, so it speeds up the fight a lot. So it Let's see, okay, he got good RNG, but he missed the hammer hit. He could uh, basically try to do that slash or a spin attack. The spin attack is bad RNG. So yeah, the fight's really fast with the hammer. Meanwhile, Mix is... I don't think he went for the, um, the small uh, skip there, statue skip. But he's halfway through the dungeon already. About to enter the mini boss. And the reason why we leave uh, Thieves Hideout for West is after you beat all of the Warrow dungeons, you usually would have that cutscene where Link receives the Triforce of Courage. But since uh, after you beat Thieves, you would actually get the Sand Rod back, it kind of kind of messes up. You have both cutscenes right there. You could go for the Triforce of Courage, but you would get Soft Warp. And after you get the Sand Rod, the Blue Warp's gonna spawn anyway. So you can just leave. And Ben has um, 10 hearts. Okay. Both runners are going to do the uh, alternate uh, trial skip which uses the big bomb and the big bomb with green mail deals three hearts of damage so if they fail it once they can actually try again with that health amount just fine right here pretty similar to the uh, ball chain soldier in Hyrule Castle is gonna hit him three times with the sword and then use a uh, arrow shot so he can reset the fight. Uh, 
Oh no, and it seems the Mix failed the eyeball duplica duplication. So he has to get the other one. So for the trial skip, he's basically going to um, come to the bomb trial and it's gonna place the bomb at a specific spot. I think that one was correct, I wasn't paying attention. Should be fine. Uh, he's trying to make sure, but I think both positions would work. So he's got, just gonna position himself using the hook shot. Instead of being precise time-wise, it's gonna be a skip precise position-wise. And he got it. So he just needs to dash to the loading zone and he skipped the trials. So he's going to the Yugano fight now. For the Yugeno fight, you want to use the bow as much as possible because it deals the same uh, amount of damage as the Master Sword. And apparently he did not deal enough damage, so Yugeno is just standing there. Normally, after you hit him a few times, it's going to work. Wow. He's doing the same attacks over and over. I think that Slash is the weakest attack he has, deals only 3 hearts of damage. The strongest one was the uh, Red Thrust, which deals 6 hearts, I believe. The normal Thrust should deal 5, if I'm not mistaken. Alright, so it's halfway through this phase, he starts blinking red and he warps around, now he's Either gonna throw the spear or it's gonna give him red lasers. He's using a small manipulation here. If you shoot an arrow right as he spawns, he's either gonna throw the spear or give you red lasers, which he's having really bad during view right now. I think he got two red lasers so far from this threat. Yeah, he's not, he's not very lucky right now. I think that was the third one. Not counting the first red razor he usually gives you once he starts blinking red. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's really unfortunate. And for the second phase, he's basically going to throw energy balls at you, so you gotta play tennis. There's a way you can actually speed this up just a little. Um, you can just start walking towards you again on each time you deflect one of the um, energy balls. So the distance between you and Yugeno shortens over time, which is slightly faster. If you do it like for the first and the second cycles, it saves maybe around 4 seconds. And after that, it's gonna spawn a few butterflies. And I mentioned it earlier that you could you could just merge and stay safe, but if you do that, you're gonna lose half a second every time you merge and unmerge. So he's just gonna dodge all the butterflies. 
if you do it both times, it, it should save one second. And now there is only one cycle left. And one thing that I forgot to mention is if you for the first or the second cycle you actually have to time when you press the B button. But for the last one you could just mash B since it's gonna throw two energy balls at you. The time is when they touch the Triforce after the fight. And he's just gonna shoot an arrow. So he can actually be right in front of Zelda's portrait to start the cutscene to end the game right away. And Mix is doing Igors and he has full health, which is not that great because if you want Sword Beam uh, hit the Igor, it's gonna deal only one point of damage. So it's it's kind of precise the fight if you have full health. Oh yeah, Ben's about to finish. He just needs to survive the Triforce now. GG Ben, 132-15. In the end, wins the game, wins the match. GG. So, will he join commentary? I hope. Well, anyway, meanwhile, Mix is. Um, I would say halfway through the dungeon. Hey, Ben. We don't hear you, Ben. Ah, uh, hey. Ah, oh, there we go. Yeah, no, I just wanted to push the talk on. Um, man, I gotta stop dying during these races. <laughs> Yikes. Little GG, man. Congrats. Hey, thanks. Yeah, pretty much besides that death and <laughs> you, Ganon. Uh, oh, and maybe Grinex. Everything was pretty good. Uh, but man, that death. I gotta stop that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Not really sure what Mia is doing here. This is kind of a strat I have never seen before. He could just poise the bomb. Yeah, you have plenty of time to just plop it down. Hitting that cutscene there isn't that bad. It only wastes maybe like three seconds. Um, it's more important to make sure that Thief Girl doesn't fall down there. That's way worse.
Well, hey, uh, Rom, thanks for doing the commentary. That was uh, a big help because uh, I don't know. We've been trying to get someone to do commentary for this for no a couple days now. No shit. No, no problem. I was I was pretty busy, but now I'm I have some free time. Gonna find a time any TR so Tresco can stop asking to allow it for all times on the video board. Huh? What? What? Yeah, I've been super busy. I've been wanting to time it. All I really need to do is just oh. do a run with NTR and NTR. Then just My... take all the loadings and be like, oh, okay. My favorite topic. Yo, Robert, yeah, probably, right. gonna, probably <laughs> gonna do this weekend. When is our uh, NTR on the leaderboards? Uh, probably never because uh, two minutes into the game and it saves two seconds already. But when is our uh, there is no more capture card manufacturing? So, Romulus, when is emulator <laughs> on the leaderboards? <laughs> never. Maybe <laughs> maybe once Ben stops dying. We can start Yikes. Okay, so never. Okay. Oh no. <laughs> God damn it, Ben. It's your fault. I don't know. Call if Capture fault. Card... If Capture Card actually gets like... Really bad, like... <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what's gonna happen. Like... The best solution, but also the worst solution is just to make NTR allowed for like everyone because like as as awful as that sounds like there's I, I mean that's never gonna happen and I hope it doesn't ever happen but like that would technically solve a lot of the problems because then it would just be like even people with the capture card could just use the dumb time save from NTR but it's uh, and no, because that's not even a good solution. Because NTR is unstable. They would, as any. they would have to pay to win. People playing with the old 3DS would have to buy the new one. Right. People with old 3DS would have to buy new 3DS. And then, like, I know in games like OT 3D, where like if you mess up, you have to like quit back to the home menu. Um, NTR is like so unstable that like you can't actually do that, and it wastes like a ton of time. <laughs> it's like so bad. There's no good solution for it except for cheaper more readily available capture cards which uh good luck with that you all just want your game to die i get it uh yeah it's pretty bad um, i mean we could start just accepting the times and just do what the people did with the the minch cap and just hit the uh, emulator times with the filter. I think, um, yeah, maybe something of the sort. I'm not really sure. It's, it's, it's hard. Um, I, um, just give in, folks. Just accept it. There's a, well, I don't think it should be banned, personally. Um, because I think most serious runners are most serious runners are have capture boards and, and, and want capture boards just for the quality alone. Uh, kind of hard. I think there if is... If is allowed, I would definitely go for 129. No, actually 119. What am I saying? 119. There we go. I it's think it's definitely um, possible. Well... Oh, getting I, I raid. Th I think the yeah, the the raid terrible emotes, disgusting raid. I think um, it it should be. A, I think the cutoff, the cutoff is is the best way to do it. Just be like, hey, if your runs faster than this time, then um, no NTR. It's just I, I think that's just the way it's got to be. It sucks, but uh. Anyway, gotta give people commentary because there is still oh, yeah. one run going. There's still a run going. 
So um, Mix is still running. Ben just won the race, uh, but he's pretty close to finishing. There's only trial skip and you get left. Oh, apparently he's going for the uh, blue mail here oh, by getting the yeah. uh, small key. Oh wow, he just did that without a setup. <laughs> I've never seen that. That's goofy. Um, I, I think he used this call. There's a way you can actually do the dash just by positioning yourself. Oh, really? That's cool. Yeah, I I, I don't I'm not really sure if it's consistent. I think Bunny made uh, a guide for it. I'm gonna look into that. I mean, for 100, percent but that's kind of neat. Um, so yeah, this pretty much just trial skip and you Ganon, but uh, Mia's gonna get the blue mail, uh, which is why I got the key because. Yugen does a lot of damage. I think he is also doing the alternate throw skip method. Okay, I hope so. Everyone should do that. It's just as fast and way easier. Who needs easy How do I put this? It's actually it's it's harder, right? It's 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 a harder setup, but it's way more consistent because. Regular trial skip is just all you got to do is release a button. You just got to do it like in a really precise amount of time. Like anyone, anyone can do that. Anyone can release a button, but um, I gotta quickly reload. For some reason, the uh, audio uh, control is not working. There we go. And now it kind of broke. <sighs> sometimes, sometimes, sometimes this <laughs> setup is. Getting on my freaking nerves. I'm sorry, folks. I'm fixing it. The server crashed out. And too far uh, back. There we go. Okay. All right. At least he has a bunch of. Oh, okay, he's going for the quest throw skip now. Oh, he is. Okay. I think he, he should just try to do the uh, skip with the big bomb since he has blue mayo and that many hearts. Honestly. I. I agree. Uh, this method of trial skip is is uh, is one sixtieth of a second is is one frame where you have to release the spin attack so that you get a jump and the bomb explodes just in time for you to get hit while you're kind of in the air. Um, it's it's really dumb. I'm really glad that there is a a significantly more consistent way to do this now. Um, I would say it isn't even really all that difficult to learn if if you have a good teacher. A good teacher? Are you a good teacher, Ben? I'm a good teacher. I taught Trev how to do it, but when he was doing a the other night, he, he didn't use it, and I got mad at him. And he regretted not doing it because he wasted like two minutes on trial skip. Poor um, Trev. You can't just be mad at Trev. Being mad I can at... be... Being mad I at spent like, like being mad at puppies. I took a half hour out of my day. I was going on like 26 hours no sleep. And I'm like, sure, I'll teach you trial skips. And they just didn't use it. But that's, uh, no. You can't just you do take, that. Did you take you only 30 minutes of your life to do that? All right. There I, I Also, folks, sorry I spent there's no weeks audio on me. To screen, make the way. tutorial and people are not using it, it's making me feel really bad. So I, if you want to if you want to get really good at this game, use my tutorial. It's gonna I, it's gonna make you get one twenties every time. Every time. One I like your tutorial every time. Dang. I like your tutorial for just about everything. Uh, I'm not. No offense. I'm not particularly fond of the way you explained trial skip. I have like. A, a bit more I would personally say about it, but I think your tutorial is really, really good. So if you're in chat and you like like Twin Worlds and you want to learn it, and you should learn it because it's really good, um, definitely check out that any percent tutorial. I think it's I'm usually not a fan of tutorials, but I think this is a is a really good a really good way, probably definitely the best way to learn this game. Um, but hey, you Ganon is uh, actually really difficult. Um, the blue mail helps a lot, but there is a that attack right there. The red thrust actually does 
five hearts of damage, but okay, yeah, you got hit right there. But with I, I, I believe it's oh. six hearts. I, I'm pretty sure because the, uh, the blue know. mail only it's does uh, it, it cuts the damage in half, so it's only going to do two and a half. But you know, it's kind of a long fight, so you have to make sure not to get hit by any attacks. What are the categories are there? A hundred percent glitchless. Uh, ad noob. <laughs> what a joke, ad noob. Okay, it looks like there's a way to kind of manipulate uh, this this second half of this uh, first phase. Um, doesn't look like he's going for it. Um, where essentially you can get him to do that attack where he spins the trident around. Um, but the downside to that is you can also get a lot of the red orb attacks, which... Uh, you cannot do any damage when that's happening. So that's kind of rough. It's basically a 10 second time loss every time uh, he does 100% that. 100% for this game is actually really good. Um, this fight is super easy in 100% because you have two items that you do not have in 80%, and those are the Hylian Shield, which can block every single one of you Ganon's attacks. Um, and the super lamp, and the super lamp is super OP. It's so good. Super. It does a ton of damage super fast with like no recoil. Uh, um, and so like you only use your sword like a couple of times during this fight. You just spam super lamp. It's really, really good. I also just noticed that, you um, you can also, we we haven't gotten to the second phase of the fight yet. But during the second phase, it's usually a, a, a three cycle um, to complete it. But you can do it in two cycles in 100% with the Great Spin, which is another really good uh, Zelda upgrade. One of, one of the best Zelda upgrades. Uh, did you guys notice we got raided by ZFG and have like 1,000 viewers right now? <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay, it looks like first... Um, First phase is done. Um, and I think he has five hearts right now. So he can get hit by three tennis balls, I think. No, he can get hit by four tennis balls and he can hit by five bats. So uh, luckily, I think he will be okay. Uh, is there anything after this? Yes, after this, um, we'll have know. some OT rando. It, yeah, I think uh, randomizer, randomizers after this. Are you um, not hearing it, Ben? Hey, can we can we get a shout out for Pickle Morty uh, for probably having the worst name I've ever seen on Twitch? Thank you very much. Uh, hello. That is that is truly atrocious. Um. Ben? During and... this portion, you have to merge into the wall to get the uh, to to shoot the bow of light at you again. You can actually speed this up like a little bit by the, during the second cycle of this, but it's like really weird. Um, and it looks like Mia is choosing not to merge during the butterfly pattern. If you merge there, it's very safe. But you also lose a half a second because actors do not do not spawn or actors stop for like half a second. Oh, I can't hear Trez. What's going on? Yeah, I don't know why you can't hear me. Ben? Uh, here, give me a sec. Rom Romu, can you hear me? Yeah. Ben can't hear me. <laughs> I've been talking to Ben the entire time, and he's just not reacting. I was like, "God damn it! Why? Why does Ben hate me?" Uh, I'll be right back. I think Discord's broken. Ben hates me. Why does Ben hate me? So, welcome all ZFG Raiders. Um, this is the link between worlds any percent tournament. Um, and yeah, well, uh, Ben hates me. This is what we found out today. Um, so, um, as you can see, um, Meaxes are about to finish. Right after Meaxes finished, we'll instantly pretty much cut the stream. 
and uh, jump into the next stream, which will be the, uh, the Ocarina of Time randomizer match between Exodus and Raikaru. Actually a great match, so stay tuned, don't go anywhere. Um... Hey, sorry about that. I wasn't hey. trying to steal the, steal the spotlight, I just couldn't hear anyone. Ben, can you hear me now? I can hear you now. Sorry Why do you that. hate me? Ah, uh, well, a lot of reasons, but uh, let's not let's not get into that. Right let, now. Let's let's go for the biggest reason. Tell me, <laughs> what did I do wrong? Um, you let me run at a ZSR Marathon 2017. <laughs> that was clearly a mistake. <laughs> clearly a mistake. Just just for reference, ZSR Marathon Ben Stevens 56 was like. Everything that could go wrong actually went wrong, and it was Absolute an absolute terrible. train wreck. And ben, ben, by the way, um, what do you think is the most viewed video of Zelda speedruns on YouTube in the past year? It better not be. It better not be Spirit Track. It is your Spirit Track run. Oh no! <laughs> this run, this has over ten thousand views by now. <laughs> okay, well that run actually wasn't that bad. It was just my my capture card was. My was my old 3ds was being super jank and it would like cut out like every now and again and i'd have to like there's probably like 10 or 15 times where the the video signal just cuts out and i gotta be like give me one second you know i, I fix it it's really dumb all right folks so um, since we are close on time uh let's cut the stream here gg to me as well finishing with a 151 33. this is amazing because we can go right over to the random stream to the match between exodus and Rikaru. Um, don't go anywhere. Please stay. Please stay. Don't go. Like, we need you. And subscribe if you <laughs> are right at it. Because uh, I'm a seller. Um, thanks gotta again. Got that sub button. Yeah, got to pop that. Um, uh, we have... Follow me on Snapchat at Sean Z Meet. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, follow Ben for whatever reason. Um, also, shout out to <laughs> Romulus for amazing commentary. And uh, catch y'all in a minute. I hope to. Later.